we have a lot of like lost people, like um, lost ships, and then just when they like visit our church, very few times, and they very like rare, then we just like say we like say hello to them, just normal, not like not with any like thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just so we can be yeah. That one yeah. is like yeah. 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 Yeah.
came from Busan, and Kat jumped in at the last minute and helped uh, with organizing different things, and Kevin also spoke. And I met Kent at the lake, and he was able to come because of that. And Hamo came also like four hours, and Eno also came. Made a really beautiful promo video. I'm, I'm really thankful for that. And uh, Salim spoke for the last conference, and I'm really thankful for your support by bringing your family here. And uh, Minjuruna and Handel came a long way here, and um, I'll try your thing you made. <laughs> what is it called? Healing some, that's right. I hope your, oh, hope the business may f flourish and make lots of money. And uh, thank you, Melvin, for coming to record. And I'm really thankful for Kathy and Brent for helping with uh, many different things that you were able to help with. And thank you for my wife also. And um, it was the greatest encouragement for me. So who's next? Okay. You can talk about anything, but just don't talk too long. Wow, time is the only factor. We have to get out of here by four, so I hope you guys are comfortable. <laughs> All right. Um, when we decided we we're going to come to the to the Jerem session, um, actually a long time ago, back in 2012, we started Jerem. And I was one of the people that came along. Uh, I was uh, privileged to see that uh, ABN, I think it was Adventist Broadcasting Network, was running the media then. And uh, what is his name? Who's, uh, what's the guy's name who's running? Chung? Chung? Oh, what's his US name? What's his English nickname? I forgot. OK. Robin. Yeah, Robin was running it. So um, that was something that I thought was, was really great. And he had like four or five cameras there. So uh, I was just really impressed with how he was running it. Then the next year, they said, oh, we can't do it. So I thought, well, I know media. Maybe I could do something to help them out, right? So I came over and offered a little help. And um, from there, I've just kind of become their media team director. <laughs> and. Uh, when I say director, basically I'm the only guy back there doing media, and you guys are kind enough to help run cameras every so often, so thank you. Um, and now this is our first year where we've had kind of continual streaming online, and thank you for those people at home who actually watched it. Uh, I know that a lot of people have um, ad blockers, um, so I can't really tell how many people are really watching. <laughs> but hopefully the numbers are really higher than they are. Um, so thank you. Uh, the, so the, the other thing is I, I do it because I have a burden for, for missions. I have a burden for, uh, for Koreans. And uh, I've been here since 2012, well, uh, this time around. But I first came to Korea in 2000 and met my wife here. And she is kind of the archetype archetype of Koreans for me. So when I found my wife, and I, I didn't know her um, before, but when I, I found how she thought, and she was kind of a new Christian then, and she's been growing in her faith uh, over, over time, it has uh, touched my heart to know that there are other Koreans like her that want to know Christ, that want to have a deeper understanding, that are t maybe are tired of milk and want to have some meat now, and want to have something real, and want to, want to learn um, the Bible, want to learn about the character of Christ, and want to experience it in their lives. So I wanted to do something real, and I wanted to learn uh, and experience God for myself. And so these days, yes, I am doing media. I'm also kind of interested in health, so I came here to the school to learn health. and. Um, we did spend some time at Wildwood, and we did learn a little bit about how to make herbal salves. So I am just going to just show this. This is an herbal salve. Um, this is something that she, she does in her spare time uh, for fun, but it's, it's like one of those healthy things that uh, has become, uh, has been very useful for our family. Uh, in any case, this is just uh, 
a way for us to, to reach out to people and to give them back something that God has given us. God's given us talents. He's given us knowledge and abilities, and we want to share it with, with those around us. So thank you for the opportunity to serve, Jerem. Thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to provide for people's needs and to uh, share what we know with uh, those uh, people in, in Korea who, who um, need to, to find out more. So please come to Jerem. Please uh, watch the chat online. Uh, to watch the, the programs online. If you have any comments, just you know, subscribe and leave comments and so on. And, uh, and uh, on Facebook, leave positive comments, please. Yeah. <laughs> Be gentle. <laughs> and, um, and remember us in prayer. Um, remember that there are people who are behind the scenes making this thing run. And um, ask the Lord to touch your life and forgive sins, and he'll be there for you all the way. Thanks. Who's next? Do I get a second turn? Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, that'll get him up there. <laughs> well, I want to mention a little bit about today, uh, especially the first two seminars, I thought, the first one was really mentally stimulating for me. I've seen tons of sermons in my life, and I'm not a huge fan of sermons because most of them are not actually very interesting. So to have one that was really stimulating and made connections in the Bible that I'd never seen before, that was exciting <coughs> to me. So I really enjoyed seeing you know, how Jonah can connect and then we, we know this is true. We know the Bible is all connected because it's authored by God. You know, so there are those connections. So I thought that was really interesting and to see how Revelation is connected with Jonah. And, but I think the second seminar about um, basically retention of church members, I'm sort of felt impressed for a long time that this is a really important thing that we tend to forget about. Uh, the Adventist Church is very pro-evangelism, and we hear a lot about that, and we spend a lot of money on that, and, you know, and I think, yeah, that's important, but I think retaining what we have is just as important, and I've never really seen it emphasized. And my own spiritual experience, you know, I've gone through times that I've experienced times that I've sort of, you know, been very near to just completely falling through the cracks. So I know how easy it is to do that, and I know that when you're there, in general, at least in my experience, no one cares, or it appears that no one cares. And so I think, you know, it reminds me that if we know people that are there, we need to be friendly with them and, and keep that connection. So I guess those are the things that impressed me the most. Who's next? Okay, I guess I'm supposed to hold both of these together somehow. So, <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, let's see. I think from this conference, there were some meetings. Uh, like Friday night, I was I was out trying to help with the media, so I didn't actually get to hear the message. Sorry, Jaywa. Um, I'm sure it was really good. I don't even think it was all streamed. So, but anyway. But I was very impressed with the sermon yesterday. Um, the message was, it, the, the concept of when, um, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but anyway, <laughs> the, the man who spoke, he, um, Sabun? Sabun? Sabun, okay. So he, he was mentioning about um, that, if you heard on the news or somewhere, Jesus is not coming, and would that surprise you? Would it shock you? Or would it be just like, oh, that's no problem, it's okay, I don't really care. And I was thinking, 
Um, even though I, I don't think I always live as close to Jesus as I, I know I don't live as close to him as I would like to, um, I would be very sad if I ever heard the news, Jesus is not returning, we have no blessed hope, we have nothing to look forward to. That would, that would hurt me very deeply. It would be like the most, the, the saddest thing I've ever heard. That would be the saddest news I could ever think of. And um, I'm just very thankful for the blessed hope that we have, that no matter what happens or how long it's, uh, it seems like we, we don't see Jesus coming yet, we can always look forward to that he is coming, he will come, because his promises are sure. And um, even though I, you know, I've been thinking since I was in high school, I was, I was thinking, oh, Jesus will come before I graduate. Of course, that hasn't happened, but that's okay. I still can hang on to the blessed hope that we have. And um, that, that was just a really powerful message to me. Okay, who's next? <laughs> Although I haven't been a part of all of the different activities for this weekend, uh, I've been a uh, professor here during the weekend because on Sundays is when we teach most of the classes. And uh, from being here on Friday night and listening to um, uh, uh, Jay was other whole, which is not other half, because you have to be whole before you get together. So this is Lily. Uh, and uh, referring to yesterday afternoon, how much Jay was spends uh, preparing for this conference, of course, it can be disheartening to think that you were expecting so many uh, people to respond and come in person, uh, at the same time having the luxury of you listening uh, live right now. Uh, through the media, at the same time knowing that it is never the same when you are here and you can actually integrate uh, in the environment in which we are surrounded by. At the same time, we need to realize that uh, many of these things that are being done right now are for the future use of you to share it with other people and for us to be able to experience it in such a way that we know that it is for an individual experience with Jesus. And instead of looking at numbers, we should be looking for um, that quote in the spirit of prophecy that um, actually validates what has happened here this weekend, in which we are reminded that the methods that God will use to finish the work will be the simplest ones ever done. And so each and every one of you have done a part in making this possible, even if it's, just, if it's, if it's in just telling other people about it. And, and now it is our turn to spread this message uh, through our different social media links and to be able to make sure that more people are able to experience this in, real, uh, in a real way by coming here uh, in person and to be able to participate because it is by your input that this is uh, made uh, even better. The best contacts and the best things that we have ever learned from the life of Jesus happen in a one-to-one -one interaction. If you look back in the gospel and you look at the 10 or so interactions that we, list, that we uh, look at in a um, usual uh, general way, especially like the one with Nicodemus, we see how Jesus takes the time to talk to the person one-to-one. -one. And that should be the um, um, way in which we should approach uh, these things, that even though we might not see all these different uh, turnouts as we were uh, thinking about, that Jesus has been here and he's been working on our hearts and in your hearts as you are um, uh, also participating in a, a remote uh, way. Um, even famous people from our time, um, I can think of a famous um, author from a book, a series of children's books in, in the um, uh, England, since this is being broadcast, I don't want to advertise neither the author, not the book series, but you might have an idea who that may be. That person was actually uh, uh, appearing in some of the small reading clubs that are in some local faraway places in some local libraries. And so you never know uh, who you are going to be touching, and it's not, again, not about numbers, 
but about the quality of the message that we have experienced. So I hope that we can take this to heart and uh, be able to use this to remind others about uh, why they should be a part of this movement. So thank you again for letting me be a part of this. Hello. 어 많은 사, 이렇게 사람들을 이제 국제적으로 이렇게 만날 수 있는 자리가 생겨서 이렇게 와서 이렇게 얘기해 보면서 음참 이렇게 어 각자의 그 신앙을 지키면서 이렇게 열심히 살아가시는 모습을 보면서 저도 힘을 얻고 다 같이 이렇게 힘을 얻을 수 있게 돼서 좋은 시간이었고요. 네. 그리고 또 어, 핸델이랑 여러 복잡한 그런 예, 장치를 했지만 예, 새로운 경험이었고요. 어, 또 이렇게 열심히 하시는 모습들을 보면서 감동을 받고 또 이렇게 설교 말씀을 들으면서 제가 생각 약간 덜 생각했던 것을 다시 생각하게 돼서 어, 재림에 대한 것과 또 전도에 대한 것들을 생각하게 되면서 어, 좀더 그런 것들이 나의 실생활에서 실제적으로 적용돼야 되겠다라는 것을 느끼게 됐어요. 네. 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 어, 그래서 돌아가는 길이 멀지만 <웃음> 아, 또 네. 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 하지만 어, 우리가 기도로 하나 돼서 더 주님의 재림을 위해서 준비하고 예수님을 바라보고 끝까지 어, 주님의 재림을 다 같이 맞이하는 어, 재림 신앙 안의 가족들이 됐으면 좋겠습니다. 네. 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 Blessed just to see people support, um, especially our church pastor and Elder Huang, um, huge supporters, and just to see you know church members come you know here and there. But it was just so blessing to see everyone here. Um, anyway, we are open to suggestions about next year's conference. Uh, actually, Jaywa was thinking about not continuing, but I don't know what the Lord has impressed him now. I told him to pray about it, um, but. Anyway, definitely, if there is totally no support, then of, of course it's discouraging to continue, right? But because we have support, and I know that, anyway, God always provides us with you know, financial needs, support, or whatever it may be. But I was just blessed by how much people gave. So I was very blessed by that. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. All right. <clears throat> I wasn't really, yeah, I wasn't really planning on doing this right now, but I was going to do it more privately, but I think I'll do it now. 
Um, I, uh, we were talking about support, and it just uh, sparked some, something in my heart, like pricked my heart and made me think. Uh, I'm so glad that Enoch came up here. Thank you, Enoch, for coming and speaking. Uh, you touched my heart that you decided to come up and say something. <laughs> um, you know, we were doing this all for you because you speak Korean. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so I want to thank you, Enoch, for joining our media team. And I want to thank, uh, where is he, Chris. Where's Chris? Okay, well, Chris... Uh, I want to thank Chris very much for joining our media team, and uh, he took a, a bit of a leadership role, helped, helped to set the budget amount and so on, um, and you know, we found a way to get under that <laughs> somehow. <laughs> we didn't rent anything. We all pitched in our own equipment. I also want to thank Melvin for coming all this way. Um, next song day area, yeah. So thank you very much, Melvin. Um, I, uh, I want to give the thing I mentioned earlier to them. Uh, this is a healing salve, and just so you have an idea of what I'm giving to them, it's, uh, it was made by my wife. She took classes at Wildwood. Yeah, and uh, yes, homemade. These are homemade. They are, they contain comfrey, and that's actually very useful for helping with skin and, and diseases, and uh, it's a disinfectant. It's good for atopy and, and so on. So it's not just uh, something you put on your lips, not lip balm. It's got um, honey, like, um, no, not honey, I'm sorry. Beeswax, Beeswax thank you, and uh, calendula oil, and what else, what else is in here? <laughs> She's like, <laughs> lots of other stuff. <laughs> she threw lots of great stuff in here. So this is actually going to help your skin if you have atopy or e eczema or whatever. Um, I'd like to ask for Enoch, come on up here and receive your award. <laughs> Come on down. Yes. Yay. Okay. It comes with a free hug. Thank you so much. <laughs> there you go. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And uh, this one's for Melvin. I'll stand still so the camera doesn't move. Come on up here. Leave space for you. Come on. Come on. Come on. She's going to be online. <laughs> you can walk that way if you want. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. All right. Cool. And um, I also want to thank uh, my other guy. He's not here. Chris is not here. Is this Chris? He's coming? Oh, okay. So, yeah, this one's for Chris, so I'll let him know. Um, yeah, so uh, I want to thank you. I want to thank you at home for watching. Uh, please continue to, to watch. Uh, next time when we have a J Room session, we'll try to get the announcements out earlier. And uh, thank you. Please leave comments on Facebook for Jehoa. Good, happy comments for everyone. Because we put a lot of work into this. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. And we'll see you next weekend here. <laughs> Thank you. All right, who's next? All right, this will conclude our, our discussion for right now. And um, we want to have someone come up and pray, probably. Okay. Okay, would you end with prayer? And, uh, let's pray. Father God, even when Elijah thought he was the only prophet that remained faithful to you, you had 7,000 people that didn't bow down to Baal. And we believe that you still have those people that are going to move your work forward. And we want to be counted as one of those numbers. Father God, as we go back to our home and our life, of our normal life, help us reach out our hands of faith in a way we've never done before. So we can draw the fresh source of power and righteousness from Jesus Christ. And people around us may see the, may see a drastic difference in the way we live. And as we come back next week again to the Jerim Conference, help, help us bring back testimonies 
on how Holy Spirit revived us with his with his word with the word of Jesus and and with his transforming power and fill this place with more praises and and songs and more stories of healing and reconcil reconciliation and forgiveness of sins in Jesus name we pray amen. amen thank you everyone let's go home <laughs> you want to say something <laughs> he came to clean. Say, let's clean up. That's what I gotta say. I call him to. I call him to clean the keyboard. <laughs>